Hey there class, welcome back. Uh, this is a lecture on forgetting in our memory chapter. So let me ask you, how many times do you think you would need to see an item to be able to remember it? Five times? A hundred times? A thousand times? What do you think? How much experience do you have handling money? Quite a bit, I would guess. How many times have you seen a dollar bill? How many times have you seen a quarter or a penny? You've seen a penny, right? You know what one looks like. You could identify a penny if I showed you one. But can you tell which of these is a real penny and which of those is fake? Uh, so take a look at those. Um, give me a guess. I'll give you like five seconds to think it through. Uh, I'll tell you, I would fail this. Absolutely. I'd probably be able to delete uh, or narrow down some of them. But if you guessed F, you would be correct. Uh, but I'll bet a lot of you didn't guess that correctly, and that's uh, not because you really forgot. Probably it's just that you never properly encoded what a penny looks like. And and why would you? Why would you know um, that it says in God we trust versus United States of America, that the year is over here as opposed to over here? You don't need to know that because a penny is distinctive enough um, from the other coins that you don't need to know that level of detail. Um, but I want us to think about uh, forgetting in this little section. So we're going to start with um, the uh, Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. So Ebbinghaus is famous for his forgetting curve, and it looks like this. And the idea here is that Ebbinghaus was interested in how quickly we lose information um, over over time. And so he actually used his own self as a um, as a subject, and he had himself memorize uh, three-letter combinations, uh, things that do not typically occur in the English language. And so um, he plotted his results in the now famous Ebbinghaus forgetting curve, and what he found was that much of what we forget is lost relatively soon after we first learned it. So within 20 minutes you've forgotten 40% of what you were just given. That's why it's not enough just to come to class. It's not enough just to listen to the lecture. You have to take notes on the lecture and then study the lecture and then uh, look at the study guide, take notes on the study guide, um, quiz yourself repeatedly because you lose so much uh, so quickly. After about an hour, we are down to only retaining about 40%. And then it, you see that it really kind of uh, the slope narrows or it, it flattens after that. Um, so then by about 30 days, we've lost um, something like 80% of what we have learned. So um, how quickly we forget material depends on how well the material was encoded in the first place, how meaningful the material was, and how often it was rehearsed. So did you encode it well to begin with? Did you listen intently during lecture and take notes? That'll help to encode it. Uh, did you make it meaningful to yourself? So if we're thinking about memory, you might think about your own study habits. You might think about your grandparents. Um, you might think about somebody you knew who got a bump on the head. And then this is the key for you guys, how often it was rehearsed. If you rehearse, the forgetting curve um, doesn't go down as steeply. So why do we forget? Well, there are um, uh, a few different uh, theories for this. One is the decay theory, that when a new memory is formed, it creates a memory trace, a distinct structural or chemical change in the brain, and that memory traces fade away over time as a matter of normal brain processes. The problem with this is that many studies have shown that information can be remembered decades after it was originally learned. For example, I can absolutely remember my very first phone number um, from when I was born until I was 10. Um, 3564794. That was my phone number in Champaign, Illinois. Now, I couldn't tell you any of the phone numbers after that until my most recent one. So that seems to defy decay theory, right? Um, why would I remember one from when I was uh, 10, but not the one from, say, 15 years ago when I used to live in Wisconsin? So another theory uh, is called interference theory. So they say, well, it's not just that things decay. Uh, they say that new memories are interfering with old memories, or old memories are interfering with new memories. It could go either way. They say forgetting is not caused by the mere passage of time. Uh, they're caused by one memory competing with another memory or replacing another memory. So there are two types of interference. There's retroactive um, interference, uh, this is where a new memory um, interferes with remembering old information. So a new phone number 
interferes with the ability to remember an old phone number. So I remember my phone number here in Texas, but I don't remember my phone number in Wisconsin. Uh, proactive interference is this one. This is where an old memory interferes with remembering new information. So memories of where you parked your car on campus last week interferes with your ability to find your car today. That's why I always park in the same basic location when I go to Walmart or Kroger or Target or any of the stores I go to regularly. All right, so um, let's think about uh, retrieval and forgetting. So uh, there are researchers, this is Godden and Badley, this is Badley who we've already studied. Uh, they were curious if context influences memory retrieval. And so this is uh, what's called the encoding specificity principle. They asked participants to learn a list of words in two contexts, underwater and on dry land. So yes, they actually sent people underwater and had them learn some new words. I assume that they had some kind of mask on for breathing. Um, the participants had an easier time recalling words when the learning happened in the same location that the recollection happened. So if they um, learned on land and uh, recalled on land, they did pretty well. If they learned underwater and recalled underwater, they did pretty well. Not quite as good as land, and that kind of makes sense, right, because this is where we're used to it. But if they were in different contexts, so learned on land, recalled underwater, then uh, there was quite a bit of reduction in memory. And then water, land, the opposite, is very, very similar. So where you learn it is where you should test it. So this is why I would encourage you when you're doing your studying, study in the same place and take your tests in the same place as well. Uh, so this again is called the encoding specificity principle. So this is uh, Henry Molaison. Uh, in the literature he's called HM. He was 60 years old here. Um, Henry had an unfortunate, uh, the unfortunate experience of having part of his hippocampus removed. Um, this was done in order to try to help him, and they didn't really know what was going to happen. And what happened was he had massive memory failure, um, some pretty significant amnesia. So amnesia, um, uh, exploring the causes of memory failure in the cases of amnesia can aid in the understanding of the biological basis of memory. So amnesia can result from either physical or psychological conditions. There are two different types and degrees of amnesia. There's anterograde and retrograde, and I will want you to know those two for the test. So let's take a look. I always need some kind of a mnemonic device to remember this uh, personally. <laughs> so uh, retrograde, so retro means before. If I say, oh, I'm going to dress, you know, retro tonight to go to a party, you're going to think, oh, she's probably going to wear 70s or 80s or <laughs> maybe even 90s uh, kind of attire. Uh, so retro means before. So retrograde amnesia is the inability to retrieve memories for events that occurred before an amnesia causing injury. So I am playing football, I crack my head, and um, if I have retrograde amnesia, that means I can't remember the stuff that happened before the event. Um, I can't retrieve the old memories, but I can form new memories. Entero means after, so um, I think of this as A and A here, so entero is after, retro means before. Um, so anterograde amnesia is the inability to form new memories uh, that occur after an injury. You can remember the old things, but you can't form new memories. All right, uh, that's it for this uh, little mini lecture. I'll see you in the next one for memory aids.